Many makeup brands love to claim that they are inclusive of all skin tones, but they always fail to mention that that only applies to light skin tones, as stated by colorism in the cosmetics industry. And though the use of cosmetics dates back to ancient times, the practice gained popularity in the United States in the 1900s with the foundation of Maybelline and Max Factor. With cosmetics products being mass produced and available in drugstores for the first time, the industry took off. However, these products were only being produced for and marketed to wealthy white women. With the United States still experiencing segregation and racial oppression, films and beauty advertisements featured only white actors and models. Despite the fact that women of color were not presented in mainstream media at the time, there was still a demand for darker cosmetics. Chicago's official cultural historian, Tim Samuelson, claims that Black women in the early 1900s did not have access to cosmetic products. Large department stores, they're not going to stock for people of color. This led to the creation of a niche market with a handful of companies creating makeup specifically for Black women. Today, I'm basically going to tell you about this ongoing conversation of like various skin tones amongst Black and Brown people not being represented. But particularly, I'm going to tell you about a Black influencer named Gloria. And she happens to be a Sudanese American, more popularly on TikTok. And she is known as beauty influencer. And she has a mass of followers, like 2 million followers. And she basically tests makeup brands large and small, on how truly inclusive they are. Typically, she does swatches, whether it be foundations, blushes, etc., and she gives her honest opinion about them. One of her most viral videos was her review of Euphoria, where she compared their darkest shade to basically blackface. Which side of my face is the black face paint or the Euphoria foundation? T, you can't tell. You know why? Tar in a bottle. This is jet black face paint and this is the darkest shade of the Euphoria date night foundation. Hmm. This is black face paint. This is the darkest shade of the Euphoria foundation. Hmm. A few months ago, I tried the darkest shade of the Euphoria foundation. This is what it looked like on me. I'm gonna apply some of the foundation on this side of my face so you guys can see. Let's just go ahead and try to blend this out, you guys. Enough. Who is that color? I'm gonna wipe this off. Let me put the paint all over my face. I'm literally just going in with the face paint. We're gonna do some painting. And let me just go ahead and blend it out with the brush. This is the darkest shade of the Euphoria Foundation. This is black face paint. Hmm. Sometimes it's okay to say, hey, maybe my brand is not made for complexion. Gloria's video again will go viral and bring up a much needed conversation and criticism. She would basically have an interview where she acknowledged that she didn't really feel comfortable reviewing them, but she decided to anyway because a lot of people said she should. And she goes on to talk about how she experienced colorism and that she was basically disappointed with their shade 600. She says, I tried Euphoria's initial launch in September of last year, and I received that launch in PR by mail. I made my darkest shade video and the shade didn't work for me. When I made the video, I was met back with Fiona, the owner, who said that she launched all of the lighter shades first because she wanted to see if the consumers would like them. And then if customers did like the foundation after that, she would launch the darker shades. So basically, Black women are an afterthought. After I heard that, I was like, okay, well, I don't really need to use this brand anymore. But then people kept tagging me a few months later on the shade extension of the Euphoria Foundation. Even when I saw pictures of it online, something was not right. So I didn't go out of my way to buy it immediately. This was also a week where I was getting an influx of people tagging me to try it. I was walking past the Euphoria stand in Ulta and I took a look and mind you, Ulta had super bright fluorescent lights and the foundation still looked black. But I came home and I tried it and I just thought, there is no way this can be a human color. And I know I'm not the darkest, but I obviously know that I am on that end of the spectrum for sure. And it was kind of just like a wow. Euphoria literally made a video last year where they received constructive criticism about the brand's lack of inclusion. And they said they were going to work on it and were already in the works with making the darker shades. And this is what they came out with. It just felt very dystopian. And this cannot be the world that we live in where people genuinely think that people who have dark skin are just black. After that, I had to make a video. And the interviewer goes on to say that they were happy she spoke out. They acknowledge that people were saying, well, Euphoria tried. And she responds, trying isn't good enough because inclusivity is the bare minimum. 
I'm a person on this earth, like every other person on this earth with a lighter complexion and a darker complexion. There is no point in creating a complexion launch and only catering to a certain demographic of people on this earth. At that point, just say who who your target audience is. I feel like when makeup brands and beauty brands are not being inclusive, especially in 2024, it opens up a bigger conversation about anti-blackness, colorism, and racism, and how the beauty industry is a little bit rooted in white supremacy. So we have to have these conversations, and the beauty industry has to change. I don't understand how people don't see how far we're getting set back if we're not having these conversations. And yes, it may not affect you directly, but not your job as a person, especially of a lighter complexion, to minimize or diminish the experiences of Black people or darker complexion Black people. I do feel like she was very correct in this. Like, if you let little stuff slide, like people gonna constantly dehumanize you and use you. And I do think it's important for beauty influencers to be honest and transparent. There are a lot of Black people and people of color who appreciate her reviews. However, recently she received another kind of backlash, which caused her to take a break on her online presence. Why would you send me this, Giorgio Armani? (laughs) Giorgio Armani, why would you send me this? Period. (laughs) She says, hi, babes, I'm logging off for a bit. The internet has become an increasingly violent space, particularly for dark skinned black women. It's heartbreaking and harmful to constantly confront the overwhelming colorist, anti-black, and racist rhetoric that's directed at us by the masses. No one should be forced to endure that level of emotional trauma. What's even more disturbing is how bigotry and white fragility are amplified when black women, especially those with darker skin, speak out. The world consistently refuses to listen to us or acknowledge our experiences. There's a persistent failure to see dark-skinned black women as fully human, as deserving of the same empathy respect, and grace afforded to others. We are often dehumanized, either erased or harshly criticized because the world doesn't know how to engage with our existence beyond stereotypes and shallow narratives. This is the harsh reality. Society has long been conditioned to dismiss us, to see us as less deserving of care and protection. That dehumanization allows for the continued disrespect and disregard for our voices, our bodies, and our contributions. This has to change. Black women deserve to be treated with dignity. Black creatives deserve recognition and respect. And dark-skinned women deserve to be seen, valued, and humanized in every sense. We are not here to be performers for the world's consumption, nor are we here to be your punching bag. We are here to live fully with the humanity that should never be questioned or denied. And I think it's really sad that dark-skinned women are often bullied off platforms. Of course, a lot of Black women are. But I think that dark-skinned Black women often face another level of discrimination and people were under her comments saying the most rude and absurd things. And another conversation was there were like white influencers who were saying, well, as someone who's extremely pale, I'm not often represented. And a lot of people feel like they were brushing her off. And I want to go back to YSL a bit because YSL has in the past done some shady things on this YSL particular video a blush who is this even made for why don't just drop these new make me blush liquid blushes and this is in the shade 69 and it's a very light lavender so as you saw in gloria's video by the way she's absolutely incredible i'm a huge fan of her content i just i love her dearly going on so white and i think that all of the blushes that they launched have a white base to them So I'm literally looking at it and I'm like, who would that even work for this color? So I'm curious to try it out myself to see if it would even work on me, this lavender blush. When I first saw this blush, I was like, oh, I'm gonna mix it in with my concealer to brighten it. But then I really thought, and I'm like, babe, this is blush. Like, why would I be mixing this in with my concealer? That's crazy. So let's see if this is gonna work on me because I really don't think it's going to. It's so white. Oh dear. Oh dear. And let me tell you something, I'm alabaster. Nude, light, fair, plus. Clean brush. Oh no. Mm-mm. What the fuck was that? I genuinely do not know who could wear this and it would look good on. I'm not even kidding. YSL was under a lot of fire in 2017 after posting an Instagram picture with the original caption saying, available in 22 shades, light to dark, to suit all skin tones. 
The claim that they have foundation shades for all skin tones is ridiculous. If they came out with only one darker shade and 21 different variations of the color tan. After doing some digging into whites on social media, I found a more recent post from June during the Black Lives Matter protests where they state that discrimination has no justification. As I was scrolling through the replies to this hypocritical tweet, I found a reply that really resonated with me. And someone says, oh yeah, at YSL, then why my sisters and I couldn't find any of your products at Sydney Airport that matched our Indian skin tone? To our delight, we discovered that day that apparently those kiosks are only to serve white pale skin. And this source was from colorism in the cosmetics industry. So now I am going to play some public opinion and then I'm going to conclude. I grew up hating my skin tone. Let's talk about it. I get asked a lot of questions about my confidence and let me be the first one to tell you that I wasn't always confident in my own skin. I grew up in Seattle, Washington and I went to a predominantly white school. In the entire school, there were a handful of black kids and I happened to be the darkest one. I remember one day in elementary school, we were served bananas during lunch. Multiple kids brought their bananas to where I was sitting in the cafeteria and started making monkey sounds. I literally bursted in tears and ran to the principal's office. I didn't finish school that day. My mom had to stop everything she was doing to pick me up. These are memories that I'll never forget. In the fourth grade, I changed schools. My mom taught that putting me in a school that was more diverse would stop the bullying, but things actually got worse. I was called all the names you could think of. Burnt, Blackie, and the most famous one of all, African Booty Scratcher. I would get into fights and suspended from school and eventually in the seventh grade, I was expelled for having too many suspensions. My mom moved me to Senegal and that is where I completed the remainder of middle school and some of high school. Living in Senegal is where I was able to regain my confidence because there were other students who looked just like me. Luckily for me, my mom is my superhero. She tried everything she could to help me love myself. She would always remind me of my beauty. And although I'm now 29 years old, she continuously reminds me of my beauty on a daily basis. As I've gotten older, I've learned to love myself. I've learned that loving myself comes first before anyone else can learn to love me. It's been a tough journey from being bullied as a child to hearing how beautiful I am as an adult. But if you don't have anyone in your life to remind you how beautiful you are, let me be the first to tell you that you are beautiful and you're one of one. I hope this message helps any dark skinned girl out there who doesn't feel like she fits society's standards of beauty or expectations. Although society decides who's beautiful and who's not, I just want you to know that God took time creating you. So if you just needed to hear that today, I hope this message really helped you. Get ready with me to talk about what inclusivity and beauty really means. My name is Ofune Amaka and I am the face behind Coco Swatches and I've been creating content centering Black beauty, talking about diversity and inclusion in beauty for the past eight years now. One of my pet peeves is when a brand has a decent like foundation shade range, but then they don't have anything else, you know, to, else to offer me as someone with a deeper complexion. I feel like that's really where like the shade rate conversation just drops off is like after people like create foundations they feel like they're done and even when we talk about like foundation shade range it's not just about ha who has the lightest or the darkest shade it's also about like what does the range truly look like are there gaps is it even are there an equal number of light medium and deep shades those are all questions that i always think about whenever i'm evaluating a foundation and that's why i really like this milani conceal and perfect foundation if you didn't know it actually comes in 45 shades which is amazing for an affordable drugstore brand I just also love that this formula is so versatile. It can be used as a foundation or a concealer. Like, come on, you can't tell me my skin isn't skinning right now. I feel like another topic that doesn't get talked about a lot is about like naming in the beauty industry and how that kind of affects our perception or our expectations. Like I'll get a full collection of lipsticks, but only the pale pink will be named as nude, like in 2023. Like, I don't understand that because, you know, obviously, it's not my new. And even just how colors are described. Like I'll go on a website and I'll see a blush described as like a deep berry, but then on me it's like a bright pink. Like the colors are clearly meant to describe what the color looks like on a lighter skin tone as opposed to what it looks like on a darker skin tone or even a medium skin tone. So I say all this to say we're definitely making strides with inclusivity and beauty, but the more we look at it as a holistic thing that's embedded within the fabric 
of brands, of media, social media, of just everything that we do, the better it's going to be for everyone. No, because I'm actually upset. People are driving so many black creators, black influencers off of the internet, off of this app, off of everything for no good damn reason. And I think one of the most jarring things about this is learning that as of yesterday in the 22nd century, no one knows what the word inclusive or inclusivity means. Because there is a creator, another beauty creator on here or beauty influencer called Ocean, and she has albinism. So she has a very light pale skin tone and the YSL Lilac Blush shows up well on her skin tone. And now I can't imagine this poor girl being in her comment sections um, and everyone's like, this is true inclusion. This is true inclusivity. I don't like Gloria because she doesn't think about this side of inclusivity, etc., etc. I can't imagine being the subject of someone's counter argument to invalidate someone else's experience just because of how I was born. Like that to me, you guys are very odd and weird for that. But for everyone, please open a dictionary and Google what inclusivity means because you're saying inclusivity works both ways. So why is it not working both ways? Real inclusivity was to make a blush range that both Ocean and Gloria can use. Like that's what inclusivity means. Like I don't, I don't understand how you guys are misunderstanding what inclusivity means. And no one is upset or no one is annoyed that Ocean can use these blushes because Ocean has her own set of, you know, struggles with the beauty industry considering her skin tone also but ysl marketed this blush as everyone can use it they have a black girl on the thing so they marketing it as inclusive for all when it's not inclusive for all the the, the black girl in their ad is not the average black girl that can use the product in fact i don't know which black person can use the product i haven't seen any example of it so let's all pick up a dictionary open it to i and find the word inclusive and read what it means because this makes no sense. This video about this girl basically saying um, these beauty brands are using black women as a form of promotion. That's exactly what I thought when I saw this video. If a brand takes the correct steps, there's only two ways that this situation can go. One, they send another product. She likes it. She gives them a good review. Great. Good promotion for the brand. Everyone's happy. Two, they send another product. She doesn't like it. She gives them a bad review. This is where the brand now has the opportunity to do the whole redemption arc. And what I was thinking is maybe they're just sending her bad products on purpose. You're telling me that out of the whole of the YSL marketing team, they sat down and they were like, yes, we're going to send her the lightest shade of lilac and she's going to love it. I just don't believe that. <laughs> what I do believe is if she were to give them a bad review, they probably have a prototype back in the lab ready on standby for them to send to her so she, they can do their whole redemption arc video. Hopefully it's positive, if not back in the lab. These are big beauty brands. This isn't no little glossier. No, no. These people have been around a long time. I think they know exactly what they're doing. She's done the same thing with Rode and with one size. I don't think I would have considered even buying Road if it wasn't for her. She's promoting their brand, she's giving them awareness, and she's helping them reach audiences which they probably never reached before. So it's a win-win. A dark-skinned girl with masculine features, I'm gonna show you exactly how I slay my makeup. This makes me actually kind of sad to see because she does not have masculine features. She has Afrocentric features, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, <sighs> No, and it's just really sad that she's equating Afrocentric features with being masculine. Man, society, man, society, society. I got beef. I got beef. I collected myself because the way that society makes women feel that they're not adequate, that they are presenting as masculine simply because they have you know a bigger nose they have an afrocentric feature and it's just like y'all beautiful just the way you are like, society on a whole got us messed up skin color hair afrocentric features it's just like we need to abolish it all i feel like it's just something that we have to unlearn 
if you ever want to know what it's like to be a black woman who has a voice and who speaks up against things that they feel is wrong or things that they want to be changed in america just go on gloria's tiktok and go through her comments as most people probably know gloria is a beauty creator here on tiktok and she makes videos brands send her their products she reviews the products and most times or a lot of the times the product doesn't work for her skin tone. She is a deeply melanated, beautiful black woman, and she always has her foot on these brands necks, which, as you should. And one thing I love about Gloria is she's always so respectful with her content. Like, she literally just calls it what it is. And she's not like, oh, let's go cancel this brand. No one put money in their pockets. She's not even like that. She's just like, hey, I think you should be inclusive so people who look like me and people who are even darker than me can actually use this product. And a lot of brands who are actually ran by good people and want their brand to be about inclusivity, they take what she said, they go back to square one, go back to the drawing board, fix their formula, and then they send her another product. And she always, always, always makes follow up videos with new products. And she's like, thank you for listening. Like, I love this product. I can use this product now. Like, she is, I love her down. And she's literally always trending. She always goes viral because there's always tone deaf ass brands that will send her their products. And it literally like there's no way in hell that they thought it would actually work on her skin tone. And at this point, I'm starting to feel like it's like a little bit rage baity because they're like, oh, we know she's going to make a video about this. We know that we're going to be trending. And I just feel like they know what they're doing at this point. But Whenever she comes across products that don't work for her, her comments are flooded with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who are just basically telling her to shut the fuck up. There's so many people that are like, why does everything have to be inclusive? Why can't you just go use a product that actually does work for you? This product works for me. Why does it have to work for you? And it's literally so disgusting to see because like, ew, I can understand what well, I can't understand. But if you want to say, Everything doesn't have to be inclusive. Okay, fine. But if your products aren't going to be inclusive, don't market yourself as being an inclusive brand who has products for everyone. If you only have products for this side, then just say, I only have products for this side. But don't say, oh, I have products for everyone. Everyone can enjoy my products. If you know damn well, that's not the fucking situation. Recently, YSL sent her, mind you, sent her, she did not go out of her way to buy these blushes. They sent her these blushes and they literally have a white base. So obviously, if she is a deeply melanated woman, obviously these blushes are not going to work for her. So she tries these blushes. She doesn't blend them out because we all know it's just going to fucking look ashy on her. Manny MUA literally tried these same blushes and they didn't even work on him. And he's just like tan. He's not even dark. So everyone is like, oh, well, this works for me because I'm really pale. And then they're like, oh, well, there's so many blushes that do work for you. Why do you have to talk about these ones? And then a lot of people are bringing up this creator. Her name is Ocean. She has albinism, so she's really pale. And she tried the blushes. And of course, they work on her because, like I said, they're a white base. So people are using her to like bash Gloria. And they're like, well, you don't think about people, other people. Ocean tried them and they looked great on her. It got to the point where Ocean had to turn off her comments and make her own video basically telling people do not use my name to go bash someone just because you want to be a fucking racist bigot on this internet. And it's like this could have all been prevented if YSL would have been like hey these blushes have a white base. This is going to be for people on the paler side. You see how simple that is? Then people like Manny MUA, people like Gloria, darker people wouldn't even go out of their way to even pay attention to these blushes. But no, they want to have pictures on their website of dark people using these blushes, which I don't believe those pictures are those actual blushes, but they're using these blushes on their website and it looks beautiful. But then in real life, when real people are using these blushes, it just looks ashy. It's just so disheartening and disappointing, really, but not even shocking to see how much hate Gloria gets simply because she is a black woman who uses her voice. And so I salute all of the brands who actually listen to her. They fix their products. They make it inclusive because everyone deserves to feel beautiful. Everyone deserves to wear makeup. Everyone deserves to feel like they can use your products. And if you don't want everyone to use your products, then you need to be upfront about that and say, hey, my products are for dark people. Hey, my products are for light people. Hey, my products are for X, Y, and Z. Like simply just say that and we can stop the discourse. 
But for all you weird ass racist people who are always in the comments basically telling her to shut the fuck up and take what she can get, fuck you because that is so disgusting. Like, no, she's going to continue to use her voice. She's going to continue to make a change because a lot of these brands actually listen to her and they fix their shit and they do it right. It's just so hurtful because I know like that must not feel good to just be trying to help your community. And then there's people who are on the opposite spectrum of you who can walk in any fucking store, grab any product they want, and it's going to work for them. And they're telling you to shut the fuck up and go find a product that works for you instead of talking about the ones that don't work for you. A lot of people lack empathy. And if a problem doesn't affect them, they don't care because that's all it is. You will never see a dark person in Gloria's comments telling her, like, shut the fuck up. It's always people who could walk into any Sephora, any Ulta, any makeup store ever. They don't, you could order online. You don't even have to go in stores because you don't have the fear of like, oh, I wonder if this is going to look the same in person than it looks online. No, it's always people who every single brand caters to you. So you don't know what it's like to have so many brands who don't give a fuck about you and who feels like, oh, like we're an afterthought basically. So it's like, it's just so fucking annoying. And there's Gloria gets so much more support than she does like disgusting comments. But it still pisses me off every time I go through her comment section and people are basically telling her to shut up and go find products that actually work for her. Like if you're one of those people, you need to seek help because you're fucking disgusting. In college, I had a classmate who studied food science and she eventually created her own natural hair care line and facial cosmetics. She was also someone who had flawless skin and a gorgeous afro. I'm not blaming Gloria in any way. However, I do think that it would be very empowering if she decided to create her own makeup line, especially with so many other Black women struggling with similar issues. And for her to kind of have the influence she does and understanding, I think that it could go well. I think that even her deciding to do educational courses could be another avenue, especially so she won't have to to rely on any social media platform. She can become sustainable and hopefully be in a better space. I know that every shade works different within the black community. And I remember getting roasted in college because I didn't know how to use makeup. And at first I really didn't know how to find my shade. So there is typically a niche for beauty and black women in general spend a lot on it, whether they're learning it or it's just something they enjoy. I do think that brands need to stop planning in our face and I think that we also have to continue to hold them accountable and not support them. There are various other like black women who have brands out. And I think it's worth to, you know, purchase from them, even if they cost a little bit more. Last but not least, I think it's very important for content creators to know their work and just take breaks as needed. So I think in general, even if this hadn't happened to her, I think that it's very important, whatever field you're in, to just take a break because if you let in a lot of noise, oftentimes you can't reflect on how you feel and just prioritize your own needs. I'm going to end with this quote. Our bodies are connected to a knowing that extends back, back, back before these systems of oppression were ever forged. It is in our bodies that we contact our intuition and our innate human needs to move toward rest, nutritive connection and expression. In our body, we first attune to environments where something is off. It tells us, hey, pay attention here, or hey, get out of here. Decolonizing the body is not a practice of putting something on to reconnect to this essential wisdom, but rather an orientation toward taking something off. We're throwing off the colonial overcoats we've been buried in and reclaiming what we've always known. We're allowing ourselves to rest our eyes and simply trust what our body is communicating. This is a practice of remembering ourselves, as stated by Kelsey Blackwell. What are your thoughts on this subject? Let me know down below. And thank you so much for listening to Books and Looks TV. I'll see y'all next time.